what's crazy about this pack and why it ties into Josh and Leland's. So I worked for uh, Josh and Leland's for four years. It was my second job out of college. And um, this company that produced this, New Card Scoops, was based in Seaford, New York, which is in Long Island. Not that big of a town. Meanwhile, the manufacturing plant for this company, I'm going to see if I can show it on here. And if not, I'll show you when we get, yep. New Card Baseball, Seaford, New York, 1961. How cool is that? Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Hey, you know, quick question, Lou. As a kid, did you ever send away, like, did you get, you know, wrappers from candy or from baseball cards and it would be like free album or free ring? All you have to do is send in five cents and three stamps. And of course, you need your parents involved because, you know, no kid has stamps and is, you know, can really get to the post office in, unless you live within walking distance. I would bother my dad silly. How about yourself? Yeah, I do remember that. <laughs> that that's fun. I remember uh, before getting to college, uh, like BMG, I don't know if you remember that, the CDs. Oh my goodness, I would sign up under nine names because you got like 13 CDs for a penny. And so my father calls me one day, who's like, who's Sam Smith? I'm like, I'm sorry, is this a trick question? He's like, well, Sam Smith just got 11 CDs to the house. I'm like, um, all right, well, I'll just put him, in, put him by my door. <laughs> You know, what, what can I tell you? <laughs> yeah, that's pretty funny. So, um, all right, we're going to get started. We're good to go? Great. Uh, uh, back in the day? Oh, I'm going to, I mean, I love music. So I bet you we did it, I did it eight, nine times. Oh, yeah. Yeah, not an ICD collection. I like music. Uh, okay, seven. We're going to randomize it seven times. Good luck to Dom and Kev. Uh, so for those of you that like to watch our Vintage Break show, when we often have a, a pack like this, which is a one-off or might only have a couple, they, um, they often sell quickly. So as you can see here, Dom and Kev jumped on it. Uh, one individual has three spots. I think the other has four. And it's a seven-card pack. Cards generally come out pretty sharp. It's a matter, matter of where the centering lies. Um, but it is chock full of stars because it's really documenting, you know, anyone from Cy Young to Mickey Mantle. It's, it's pretty cool. Thus the name, Baseball Scoops. It's scooping about, you know, something that happened in baseball history. Yeah, it's kind of fun. Okay. What was that? Oh, wow, I certainly remember Steve Winwood. Just as a CD. So I think, uh, J5, if you could pull up the uh, PSA so I can see it also. Um, I think my first CD that I purchased, because I think I was given one or two, was Stone Temple Pilots. Uh, I think it was plush, but I'm, I, I'm, I have to double check. But I mean, you know, I still have that album. It's great. I mean, I don't play it. No one really that plays I purchased, it. I because I think I was given one or um, two. But, uh, you know, I probably, Pilots. like, uploaded oh, it to my I Apple think iTunes. think it was plush. Know, stuff. Great. 1961 um, New Card Baseball Scoops pack coming up. Seven cards for a nickel. Kind of interesting. I'm wondering this, Lou. You think that they were trying to take direct aim at Tops because Tops would give you five cards for nickel. Now they weren't giving you any gum in here, but I did just learn this the other day. We're gonna talk. Actually, we'll talk about it right now. Um, so we opened up a 1960 Leaf baseball pack yesterday. Okay, cards came out gorgeous. In the Leaf pack in 1960, Lou, they did not include gum. Get ready for this. They included marbles. We opened the pack yesterday. I don't. Yep, I don't know if that's bananas, fungus, right? I don't know what's in there, but I did a little more research. Like, why in the world would Leaf think that a kid would rather have gum? I mean, a um, a marble instead of gum. And it's not that Leaf thought that Lou. It's that Tops actually um, blocked Fleer and anyone else from manufacturing and producing. Packs with baseball photo cards with bubble gum. So if you look one year later, Scoops doesn't have anything, and I'm wondering, like, wow, I knew they couldn't do gum. Maybe that it was too much of a pain in the ass to, you know, get the the right to do something else, or it's just too expensive. Who knows? It's very interesting.
Oh my goodness. I mean, I, I can't imagine that those packs survived it the way they did. It was uh, pretty fascinating. Um, so we're going to open up this pack right now. The first card is right here. That's going to go out to you, Dom. Next couple to Kev. And it alternates back and forth for a few right there. Let's be very careful with this. Probably should have just cut it. Beautiful. Yes, Tops did do that. Now, I don't know when they did that. So, for example, you know, had they tried to produce cards five years earlier, maybe Tops didn't have the, they, maybe they didn't protect that right. You know, I don't, I don't really know. So, uh, these cards generally come out really sharp. Sal Magley pitches a no-hitter, and he spurs the Dodgers to a pennant. Check out this Blazer, Lou, and everyone else watching. Beautiful card. Yeah, they are really nice cards. And they all depict a moment in history, uh, you know, in baseball. Like I said, from the Cy Young, Ty Cobb era, all the way up to, you know, the early, at this point, early 1960s. Thanks for joining us, David. I appreciate it. Thanks for commenting, Sam. Sam is new to our staff, and he's letting everyone know on the PSA Facebook show how you can qualify for one of the three great prizes that were given away at the end of the show today. Here we go. Dick Stewart hits three home runs in a single. That's a pretty solid game. And if you look at that, Lou, I mean, really almost dead nut centered. Very sharp card. It's not bad. Kev, that's uh, for you. We're going to uh, grade that on the house. Here we go. Former, I mean, when I say former, long time ago, Fred Snodgrass. Early 1900s. Hey, what's up, Mark? Mark's our good buddy who's on the news out in the Atlanta, Georgia area. Yep. Mark's actually done some fun stuff where, um, you know, he'll report on what he pulls and he shares it like on his own Twitter account and he has a lot of followers and such. So it's, uh, you know, it's fun to, uh, fun to watch. This is a nice beauty right here. Card number four going out to Dom. Mel Ott walked five times in a single game. That's pretty cool. Like, I mean, you know, think about this, right? You got to give new card companies some credit to produce something like this in 1961. You know, they did a nice job. They didn't just put Mel Ott in a card and say all-time great. You know, they, they had an idea for their set, and they were able to incorporate some really nice players. Um, this card looks a little bit off-center top to bottom. Yeah, actually, uh, yes. Uh, so, for example, for, um, for Ott, uh, it took place on uh, April 30th, um, 1944. So Ott, the New York Giant outfielder and man of many records, added a unique one today in receiving five walks in a single game for the fourth. Wow, for the fourth time, Lou. That's crazy to me. Three times before he had received five walks, a tribute to both his sharp eye and the respect pitchers have for him. No. I feel like I could read this set to my son at night. You know, I could just say, hey, Kroz, instead of, because we, we do three books a night. Um, say, Kroz, instead of three books, I can make it seem attractive to him. He's already negotiating. Kroz, how about I do five cards with you? It's more than three books. Meanwhile, it's less words, but, you know, let's not, let's not try to confuse him. Hey, thanks for joining us, Ray. Uh, Ray Schulte of Ray Schulte Sports Marketing. Yep, great guy. Does a lot of fun stuff for the national uh, promotions with Don Mattingly. He does a lot of stuff for charity. It's great. Oh, uh, you know, I uh, <laughs> I, I almost texted you and Tom, and I said, there's no way, because I just no idea what's going to come back, and so I just simply offer congratulations. That's all I can do. <laughs> you weren't instrumental in, uh, you know, the, ba the back room uh, analytics? No, a lot of yeah. I think I think actually, you know what though, Lou. From what I've heard, um, it it does make for kind of like making it makes it a little bit more fun for a Patriots fan because I, I yeah yeah I think that a lot of people didn't think uh, or or believe that the Patriots could do it again or at least reach the Super Bowl. So yeah, I know it's it's uh, exciting. So check this out. Wow, this is a beauty right here. So this is going out to Dom. We're going to grade this for you, bottom of the house. Pee Wee Reese was honored as the greatest Dodger shortstop, I guess, of all time at that point. 
1955, July 22nd, Harold Pee Wee Reese was honored tonight on his 36th birthday at Ebbets Field in tribute to his great service to the Brooklyn Ball Club. That's really cool. Gorgeous card. Yep. Once again, great idea for, uh, for a set. Uh, not a lot. Maybe, maybe 88, a hunch, something like that. Yes, but they did do like a new card highlights set, which the cards are a little bit bigger. So, yeah. Wow. That's pretty good. Wow, I got to read about that. So Pistol Pete Runnels, who of course, uh, in August 30th of 1960, took dead aim on Detroit Tiger pitching. He collected nine hits in 11 times at bat to lead the Red Sox to a pair of victories in a twilight double hitter. Wow. He also was spurred on by this great performance. Runnels captured the AL batting title with a 320 mark and became the third Red Sox player in the last 11 years to win the batting crown. Wow, that's pretty amazing. Well, that was a really fun pack. Get that over to John. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs>